Welcome back to Dylan with Sid Meier's Conversation, where we continue the Conversation of the Americas as the French. And then we'll pull the farmer off regular farming duty in Safe Harbor, and we'll have him teach the free colonist while we let Proxima reach 100% revolutionary support again, so that we get, I think it's plus two goods produced per colonist? We'll find out. With us setting up a college, we can start educating blacksmiths as well, which we're definitely going to need in not too long. We've got two, but we need more. We need ore miners too, but we can educate those at schoolhouses. We don't really need that many more carpenters, although it depends on how fast we explode in terms of colonies. Fighting the Royal Expeditionary Force on the sea is very, very difficult. It takes frigates, and it takes like, I think, three times as many frigates as man of wars as possible, but it's very hard. And chances are they just land their troops anyway, because we're very close to Europe at the moment. I'm going to move this free colonist that arrived from Europe over to Ironhold and I'm going to teach him to be a proper ore miner. Probably set him up over in Gunny. Yeah, I don't need anything else in Proxima at the moment, although if I can get up to 8 population I can start working on a college. I do have 7 people at the moment. For now, I'm going to have the carpenter work on cigar production, because we don't need anything else built. Actually, I can go take that colonist and move him up to the native village right up here and have him learn ore mining from them. So I'll do that. There's another tier near the Pacific Ocean, but we're not too worried about that. Let's go ahead and grab some free colonists. Maybe we can get some more. Yes, we can. Let's send them home. And then let's send the ore miner home as well. Alright, got an armory built in Gunny. So now I think we can switch off to something else. I'm kind of thinking a schoolhouse. Let's do that. Let's pull the gunsmith over to armory production and put one of the carpenters into blacksmith production. So now we'll be able to produce about four guns per turn after we go through our reserves of tools. And very soon we're going to have much greater production of proper tools in Ironhold itself so that we can start terraforming the land, building more colonies, and then expanding ideally as rapidly as humanly possible so that we can get a big-ass army together. I'd definitely like to put the Master Blacksmith to work making more tools in Ironhold. The only issue is we just don't have the ore income at the moment. So I'm just going to have him hanging around for a little while. Actually, let's have him do a little bit of farming. That keeps him above 50%, so he's still at a plus one to good production, thankfully. There's some merchantmen and some caravels moving down near the Spanish area that used to be under their control. And cotton's all the way down to 1. Rum's up to 16, goodness. Cloth is actually down to 12, interesting. And a increased tax, whatever, bro. We're kind of at the point where we just, like, we just don't even interact with Europe, basically, other than selling them a few other manufactured goods, but not a whole lot. We don't really interact with Europe other than selling them, like, cloth and cigars now in the future. Coats are going to the natives usually, although we will eventually have to sell coats to Europe most likely. Alternatively, we could just sell like one unit of say tools to refresh what they want and then maybe they'll want coats. So we got that college built, what do we want next? I'm thinking what we do now is we just turn off production, get the carpenters to do something else in the meantime. We need to start really thinking about setting up more colonies. Let's pull him completely out. We'll send him somewhere else. Alright, let's learn how to be an ore miner. Fantastic. We'll send him back down to Iron Hall so they can start working on this location right there. Especially once we get the forest removed. Hey, hey, hey. Coats actually went back up to 7. Very nice. So there is what I believe to be the Dutch privateer from earlier hanging around on the west coast. It's been sailing north. So my guess is that it might be going around the coastline up here. All the way across the north and might come down and harass the English, but there's a good chance it'll come and harass us instead. We might want to send the privateer to go meet it by heading north. And I do want to investigate this area anyway to see what the English have been up to. So we're going to send the privateer that direction as soon as we drop off our people here. So we're going to come into Safe Harbor first, drop them off, and I gotta figure out what to do with these free colonists because I got the ore miner. I'm going to send him over to Ironhold. Well, actually, I might send him over to Gunny. I think I'll have to. Alternatively, I'll send, um, you know, send this ore miner over to Ironhold. I think what I'm going to start doing is training up expert fishermen to start working some of these ocean tiles. Because we currently have one, two, let's see here. 
one extra tile that's really good. Plus this tile is probably really good, so that's one, two, three, four, five. We have quite a few fishery tiles that we need to make use of. So I'm going to pull the farmer out of the college, set him up in a forest or something temporarily, make him a colonist, and then we'll assign him back to farming so that he does the most food. All right, right there. We'll pull out the fisherman, assign the fisher, assign the colonist to be a fisherman, and then we'll go from there. We're turning out an absolute crap ton of food per turn at the moment. 33 food extra at Proxima, 10 food extra at Safe Harbor with the fisherman pulled out, so that's 43 food. 8 extra at Ironhold, so that makes 51 food. And then Gunny is even, so we're making a free colonist every 4 turns, which we're going to be increasing that production even further. We need people, tools, and guns. Those are our big objectives. We got another free colonist that we can go train up to be a expert fisherman as well. Or alternatively, we'll send him over to, I think, Proxima to learn how to be an expert farmer. Yeah, let's do that. I think we're going to start fishery training over in Ironhold as soon as we get the schoolhouse done, which will be on the next turn. We do want to try to reserve the colleges for training up more sophisticated specialties, but we only have one college at the moment. And the only thing that I'd like to train up is probably blacksmiths, but I don't really need more blacksmiths at the moment because we just don't have the ore production to meet the demand. For now, we're going to assign this free colonist to this colony just to produce, I think, a little more food. Or I could have him produce some crosses. Yeah, let's have him produce some crops. Let's have him produce crosses as a preacher. So he's actually going to basically double our cross production, which will increase our immigration quite rapidly. I'm going to move the blacksmith and iron hold over to the rainforest and have him produce well i guess not actually he doesn't produce very much let's just make food well every little bit helps we'll have him produce ore for the moment we are very soon going to have this ore miner join iron hold so we'll be working on that and the forest will be removed and changed into i believe a swamp yeah a swamp here pretty soon all right we got that schoolhouse built in iron hold We might want to start working on training up some ore miners here pretty soon. But let's go ahead and let's move this ore miner to join Iron Hole. So we'll move the blacksmith over. We'll bring in the ore miner, which is going to drop us below 50%, unfortunately. With the schoolhouse built, we need to start working towards a newspaper next. We'll pull the blacksmith out temporarily, I think, as a regular colonist, because we can't get enough or still to meet toll production we're still chewing through as much ore as we can produce since this rainforest is not yet converted into swamp and staying above 50 percent gives us plus one to all of our good production so i'd like to maintain that if i can all right with this carpenter i think i'm going to move to the spot one south of the timber and set up there pretty soon we're definitely going to be getting spreading out our colonies but we're also going to need soldiers to properly defend them just in case we got ourselves another free colonist to teach, so let's pull out one schoolhouse person, and let's put in the free colonist. Mr. Privateer is going to head north to check out the English, see what they're up to. Uh, they've actually built Plymouth up to seven people, interesting, with one set of dragoons guarding it. Oh, there's a merchantman coming north from the Europe, or from the English colonies that were Spanish. And we got some cigars and some tobacco to sell off. That leaves us with still only 237 gold. Ugh, goodness. I can't even afford to recruit anybody or purchase anything. So we'll head on back. I'm hopeful to get the cloth production up and running, and possibly cigar production as well. But Proxima is now at 8 population, which means that we can start working on a proper college. So we'll switch off of cigar production back over to the carpentry shop. Well, lumber mill. We'll pull out the criminal. It'd be good to train him to be something else, and we'll put in the ore miner. We might move that blacksmith up to here. I think that's a good idea. We'll move him up to Gunny. We have enough ore production here that it makes sense. Let's take a look at Jamestown. Up to 8 population. No defenders at all, actually. Very interesting. I would definitely like to start murdering the English, especially for standing around my lands and menacing me. Mm, there's a caravel here too, so a merchantman and a caravel. Well, the merchantman may have sailed to Europe. No, there's a merchantman heading north towards Plymouth. Two caravels, very nice. 
We've got some coats ready at Safe Harbor to go sell to the natives. We'll be doing that very shortly. We're selling to the village just southwest of Gunny. Blacksmith has arrived, so we need to pull out the carpenter, get him to do something else, put in the blacksmith. Ore production does not meet tool production here, that's okay. We'll get another ore miner in not too long, I believe. Actually, we can assign... Well, we can't... We can't sustain the food at the moment. We need more farmers here. We need the land to be worked properly. I think I'm going to send the criminal south to Proxima. We'll work on training him up to be a proper farmer or fisherman over time. And we could actually use the carpenter down south in Iron Hole to work on the newspaper faster. I think that's a good choice. The merchant man's right there, so we're going to back off slightly. Maybe we can be hidden from him, but I'm pretty sure he sees us now. I don't think the AI deals with fog of war in this game would be very doubtful of that. But the AI is also pretty dumb. Alright, Gunny's got a schoolhouse built. I think our next objective is probably going to be, honestly, like a church. The more immigration we get, the faster we grow. We don't really need a stockade here. The English aren't being jerks. We don't need a stable a warehouse. is not really important at the moment. We'll just move the guns around as needed. So let's build our church next. Alright, we got the fisherman trained up in here. We're going to pull the fisherman out of Safe Harbor, and I think we'll send him further west over to Ironhold to set up over there, or better yet, probably to Gunny to work the ocean tile so that Gunny can support more people. Let's see if we can take down this merchant man. We got a big, big chance to pull it off. Ah, oh, come on, man. This game is such bullcrap sometimes. It's so random. So let's trade with this Indian village. They offer us 362. Uh, coats right now are selling for 7 in Europe. I think we've got like a 22% tax rate. There's no way. Like, so we're trying to. We would try to bargain for a larger price of 546, but that's about what we would make just selling it to Europe. So we're not going to bother. I wanted to trade with the natives, but I think the tax rate. Well, even with the tax rate being higher, that doesn't change anything. It's 25%. Even with that rate being higher. It just doesn't change anything enough. So we'll actually take those coats over to Europe instead. It's going to be a little while longer before it's beneficial to trade with the natives. That's what seems to be the truth. Alright, we're going to set up our first colony just south of the timber right here. Blah blah blah. I know I don't need... So this is actually our first properly inland colony. Very nice. What shall we call it? Let's call it Lumberton. And in Lumberton, what is the objective of this colony? I think our main objective is going to end up being education primarily because we can't make ships here uh, education lumber production let's go ahead and start with a docks we'll set the carpenter to produce some lumber but we'll get some lumber rolling in pretty quick with a wagon train probably not on this turn though Alrighty, we'll swap the fisherman to become a teacher and then we'll bring in the indentured well the criminal to be a fisherman and then we'll train up the criminal over time to be a proper fisherman. And we got a second carpenter to help improve Gunny. Thinking back on it, I don't think a church is going to be the way to go. I actually got to pull a carpenter out temporarily. We don't have enough food supply to sustain him. I don't think a church is the way to go here. I think, I'm kind of thinking that we should build maybe another wagon train. Because we have other churches elsewhere that we can employ people at. Having a church isn't that important. Alternatively, we do need a stockade. Let's go ahead and do that just in case. You never know when we have to go to war. The English could get uppity. I'm going to start saving up some gold for a master weaver and a master tobacconist so that we can get those specialties into the colonies. And then we can start training up some tobacconists and some weavers. It's really sad that we just do not have any natives nearby that can teach us how to do tobacco planting or cotton planting. Yeah, there's not a single one that I've found in the entire north or the west. And we're still at war with the Dutch, unfortunately. I have no idea how to actually contact them. I think I have to roll up to them, then they contact me. Alright, so it's actually the Monday that episode 6 got released, and it's been 6 days since I last played this. Hopefully I can keep everything in the same chain of thought, and we'll see how that goes. I haven't really had time to record more of this colonization playthrough, because I've been testing out some remember what ideas that I have. And I also try to spend my weekends with my wife, you know. I do definitely want to maintain the objective of expanding as fast as possible now. However, I think that it'd be pretty cool if we could take out these English troops around our base. 
and then ideally push north and take Plymouth and Jamestown. There's a lot of colonists that we could take from the English. If we could get away with that, that'd be pretty sweet. The issue, of course, is that we need an army. Right now, we produce six muskets per turn in Gunny, which means that every eight turns, we can arm a colonist. That's not very fast at all. And our combination of food surplus in Safe Harbor and Proxima at the moment is 40 per turn, which means that every five turns, we are producing a new colonist. That, too, is also probably not quite fast enough, to be honest. Our overall toll production looks like it is six positive in Gunny, Looks like we're going to have about two tolls per turn extra in Gunny, as well as 14 tolls per turn in Ironhold. So I'd definitely like to ramp up toll production so that we can upgrade all of our terrain further, which means I'd like to get some more pioneers rolling out. We might need to pull the hardy pioneer that we have into a schoolhouse in order to start training other people. We could maybe do that here in Ironhold, but we are working on the criminal at the moment, but teaching in criminal takes quite a while. This is actually one of those games that takes quite a while to play it because there's a pretty good amount of micromanagement of moving goods back and forth between cities, optimizing the supply chains, figuring out where you want to go, etc. The last video I recorded went from about three hours of gameplay down to like one hour of gameplay. So that's an idea of how much time gets cut out whenever I edit these particular videos. If we think about the fact that recruiting an expert ore miner is 600 gold and you can just clear the specialization of the ore miner. That basically means that our food, taking into account our tax rate of 25%, is worth about 4 gold per food. That's sort of the way that we can think about the population growth. It's useful, but of course it can be a lot more useful to do things like, say, sell cloth. So perhaps my focus on farming wasn't a great thing. However, getting the food production will allow us to have bigger cities, so I think it all kind of evens out. Like I said, I'm not playing this game to try to win as fast as humanly possible. I'm playing this game to win, period, because I've never done it before. And if we look at the expeditionary force, I'm wondering how easy that fight is going to be. Because right now, they've got 50 soldiers, 25 dragoons, 26 artilleries, and 14 man of wars. Right now, our army consists of uh, two dragoons and a dragoon and gunny, so three dragoons total. <laughs> I highly doubt that we could build a navy capable enough to take on the Man of Wars at sea, but it is possible. You need about double as many frigates compared to Man of Wars, so we'd need probably like 30 frigates in order to take down the expeditionary force. And there's a good chance that they would just spawn like right here, the ocean right there, sail directly northwest, and then land in these forests here. We actually want to maintain these forests if we can, because will get ambush bonus when we attack them. Right now, the natives get ambush bonus against us. We will get ambush bonus against the expeditionary force once they come, because technically we know the land better than they know it. I do actually like that idea quite a bit. I should maybe consider implementing that into the civilization games. So I'd like to start cloth production over here in Proxima. So we're going to move some free colonists over to there. They're going to start working the land to produce cotton, and I'll have this guy stopped producing crosses. Instead, he's going to go towards Proxima and become a weaver. We'll of course save up some money to hire a master weaver, and then we should be able to put the master weaver into a college in Proxima to train the free colonists to actually do the job for them. Unfortunately, we have no native villages anywhere nearby that train cotton planting. I won't be able to get the raw output of cotton very high. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but it turns out that you have to send a scout into a European colony, like here in Plymouth, I had to walk a scout into the colony in order to talk to the English. There's no way to talk to the other colonies without doing that, apparently. Which I think is kind of hard if you're at war. Your scout will probably get killed on the way. So yeah, we're probably never going to have peace with the Dutch until they decide to stop screwing with us on their own way to talk to us again. But at the moment, we have a crap ton of cotton on hand, so we can go ahead and start weaving that into cloth immediately, which is exactly what I'm going to do. We've got a full load of coats. Let's see what the Iroquois would like to offer for us today. 552. We can probably get a little bit more out of them. Let's push them a little harder. Good deal. I'll take that. That'll upset them just a little bit, but that's okay. So now they want tools, rum, and tobacco. I really, really wish that we had a supply of sugar, but we just don't. They're offering us cotton, horses, and furs. It's a little unfortunate that they have access to horses now, but you only need to lose a few, and then they kind of spread everywhere. 
Like, the natives love to raid your villages and take your horses and guns if they can get their hands on them. I don't believe that we want any of this stuff, to be honest. Although we could take the cotton and then just weave it and not worry about actually growing it ourselves. Let's see what they'll offer us for the cotton. About four gold per unit. I don't think so. No thanks. Mm -hmm. There was a privateer right here. It might be English. I think there's a very high chance it's English. It looks like it came from up here. And that's likely a English spawning zone for ships coming from Europe. Our privateer, unfortunately, is still knocked out for four more turns. We need to take out... We need to take out some statesmen from, I think, Proxima and move them up to Gunny. Because Gunny needs more revolutionary support if we're going to build Gunny higher than a population five. At the moment, if I add any more colonists to Gunny, they'll have six royalists. And at that point, they'll have an efficient government. So I'm going to move from Proxima, move over to Gunny. I think what I need to do here is I need to take out the statesman from Safe Harbor, but he's producing so many Liberty Bells, it's amazing. We're actually at 100% revolutionary support, which I think means that we produce plus two goods and not plus one good. Ideally, we'd get Safe Harbor up to population 10, build a... I think it's a university, I'm not sure exactly what the name is, and then we could start training Elder Statesman. So that should be a secondary objective. If this video is late, um, sorry about that. I'm not entirely certain I can keep up the one video per day just because editing the videos down. Ooh, Iroquois attack English colony Plymouth, very nice. Editing the videos down causes them to be super compressed. Well, I wouldn't say super compressed, but very compressed, which means I had to play quite a bit in order to get even, say, a 30 minute video. Tobacco is down three gold, okay, okay. And we get some more free colonists, I'll take that. It's gonna be a while before we get any more free colonists here, so we'll go ahead and maybe set sail. Let's think about that. We do have Mr. Privateer chilling out. More regulars, wonderful. Mr. Privateer chilling out near our spawn. I can't see him right now, but I saw him earlier. He was around here somewhere. He might be going south. If that's the case, we should be okay to send the caravel over. In a perfect world, we'd buy a frigate at some point in time. But I think it's going to be a while. Selling the cloth to the Indians doesn't make sense at the moment. I think we're better off selling the cloth to Europe until the price drops quite a bit. Yeah, the privateer's moving south. Oh boy, more fucking dragoons. Just what I was worrying about. Hey, hey, that criminal became an indentured servant. Awesome, awesome, very good. So yeah, we got two dragoons north of Gunny. Looks like the English are very much wanting to kill us. There's a decent chance they might be able to pull it off. We're gonna go ahead and give the gunsmith some guns temporarily and move the Elder Statesman into position, move him into the colony. Hopefully the stockade will get built here pretty soon. We might be done for. This will be a kind of a hard fight. Safe Harbor is pretty safe, but Gunny's in some danger. I have a habit in these games, well, I have a habit in 4X games of going very hard on economy, and as a result I often kind of neglect the military side of things unless I make it a point to attack militarily very early. It's just a bad habit of mine. Once we've got the stockade built in Gunny, I'm going to get the gunsmith back to work, pull the carpenter onto defensive positions, and we'll have to hope that'll work. We need more troops. Really, I need the English to just go ahead and do it already. If they attack us, it's going to be better to just start the war, because attacking them is difficult because they're in defensive positions. European colony versus European colony, you don't get ambush bonuses against each other. They do get defensive bonuses. We might want to abandon Lumberton. That might be a good choice. It's going to be very difficult to hold it at the moment. I need to take care of the English problem first, so let's do that. Let's pull out the carpenter, abandon the colony. Hopefully he won't get taken out by the dragoons. I can defend these four colonies reasonably well. Using my road network, I can move my dragoons quite rapidly. But defending five colonies, plus one that doesn't have a stockade, is going to be difficult. I saw that privateer continuing to head south, so we should be okay to send the first load of cloth back to Europe. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I need to get more people home sooner rather than later. Ideally, I would get some more soldiers, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a while before we can do that. I think I'm also going to redistribute the horses around the colonies, since I have kind of realized that population boom is not the best way to do things. It might be better just to focus on economic production. Tax rate going up by 2%, not a big deal. Our privateer is ready to go, so we're going to send him back home. 
And we got the Starcade and Gunny. Fantastic. I'm very happy about that. So now what we need to do is we need to switch off the Carpenter to be a Gunner. Well, first we need to fix the Gunsmith to be a proper Gunsmith once more. And then we need to pull the Carpenter to be a Soldier. Just like that. Notice how painful this inefficient government is, by the way. So it's minus one, but it gets doubled for specialists. So that gunsmith was making four muskets, not six muskets. That's just how bad the inefficient government is. It basically forces you to get revolutionary support if you want to get anywhere above five colonists. And we got a newspaper and iron hole. Very nice. That'll be great for Liberty Bell production. We'll go ahead and get a warehouse built here and in Gunny. I've actually moved enough free colonists into Proxima that I can get the weaver shop fully staffed. You can put three colonists in each building. So we can make 21 cloth per turn, processing the cotton that we have on hand and that we naturally produce in our colony squares. We've actually gotten Proxima big enough that we can build, I think, the next education building after the college. So I'm probably going to do that right after I finish building the college. I wish I could upgrade the mines over here, but the presence of the English Dragoons is just too dangerous. There's going to come a point where we just declare war on them, honestly. We're going to have to. That's why I'm spreading out horse production again to get horse production up and running. Because in this game, when you fight and you lose, you lose the equipment that you have on hand. You don't lose your life. You only lose your life if you fight without guns or without horses. I'm moving a carpenter ahead, waiting outside Ironhold over to Proxima to increase the speed at which I can build the education buildings. Then I'm going to move this carpenter from Lumberton over to Ironhold to increase the production of buildings in Ironhold pretty soon too. We should be able to get Ironhold up to 10 as long as I get enough revolutionary support to keep us above 50%. I'd like to stay above 50% for the plus one good production. Of course he could get murdered by the Chugoon this turn, but we'll find out. I wish the Iroquois would more effectively attack the English and be very nice. You arrived with the free colonists from Europe, I'm going to assign them to the tobacconist shop to produce tobacco. I'm kind of surprised at how big Proxima has become, but that does make a little bit of sense. I thought it would be Safe Harbor as the primary area, but Proxima has a lot of food plus the timber production. We're not even using the ocean tile right here. We bought enough horses to Gunny that we can upgrade this carpenter from a regular soldier into a Dragoon, which means that he'll be even more defensive against the asshole English. So right now we're running with, I believe, two Dragoons total that can rapidly move around. It might be 12 population to build that third level education building, but that's fine. We're at 12 now. We're gonna make 637 gold from the cloth production. Cloth is down to 12 already. That's the thing about the Dutch. That's why the Dutch are so damn powerful in this game, is because they are less susceptible to price fluctuations. This means that they can just make more money, period. Because this is an economic game, that means that they're number one. We can get that Master Weaver now. I'm gonna take that Master Weaver, I believe. Yeah, let's do it. And let's head on back home. Yes, sir. Hey, the indentured service down a free colonist. A couple more turns, he'll be a proper fisherman. And we got Thomas Paine to increase our Liberty Boat production by 27%. Very nice. Welcome, Thomas Paine, writer of Common Sense. So who's going to be next? Let's take a look at what we've got. So Fugger is an option. <laughs> Fugger. Never heard of Jacob Fugger. All board cuts currently in effect are forgiven without back taxes. I'm not interested in that. I have not done any board cuts at all. Perhaps I should have done some, but you have to pay back taxes. We could do Hernando de Soto. We're not exploring anymore, so Lost City rumors don't need to be positive. John Paul Jones gives us a frigate immediately. Ooh, very nice. I'd like that to take on some of those privateers. Simon Bolivar. Sons of Liberty membership in all your colonies is increased by 20% automatically. That's very, very nice. That'd be wonderful. And Jean de Brabouf is the all missionaries function as experts. I'm very much split between the frigate and between 20% revolutionary support in all colonies that are built. I don't think that we need Simon Bolivar quite yet. I think we're going to go with John Paul Jones so that we can start sinking privateers left and right if we can get aware of it. Those privateers make me uncomfortable, but not as uncomfortable as the English hanging out around my cities. Oh, hello. So I just moved a wagon train out of Safe Harbor, and it looks like the English are about to finally attack us. <laughs> they demand that we withdraw all our privateers just because we're down here and we just arrived. No, screw you. 100% go screw yourself, brother. So I can tell them to go in peace, or I can tell them to withdraw their forces. They're not going to do it. Yeah, yeah, valid English interest in whatever, bro. Whatever. Just attack me already. You're starting to really piss me off. We're... 
100% going to war with them very soon. As soon as I can get the horses built, I'm going to tear these guys apart if I can get away with it. I just need more soldiers. We're going English caravel hunting. <laughs> Ideally, very carefully. So it is a university. We'll get started on that right away. Thanks so much for watching Dealing With It. This episode would have been out sooner, but you'll find out in the next episode exactly what happened as to why it was late. I've determined that I'm going to put out as much as I can with the amount of free time that I have available. That might be daily, that might be twice daily, I'm not sure. I am looking to start another playthrough here pretty soon, but there's a good chance I'll need to finish the conversation playthrough first. So, thanks again for watching Dealing With It. If you enjoyed the video, giving a like would really help to reach other viewers that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one in episode 8.